This was a part of my book, but not the entire story. Just making sure that I really deal with that particular experience as opposed to sweeping it under the rug and acting like it didn't matter. And so really getting people to understand that this was a huge part of your life. Divorce is a life altering event. It can truly change your entire life. But I also recognize is that people can change because life can change people. Yeah. It's so much to this, Sean. You can be with somebody in, tw in 15, 20 years later and be like, who is this person? Life can change you, y'all. I, I People, this is why I don't never judge people's situations because mm -hmm. life really can change you. When you're young, I really, you know, you, you see the world in a different kind of lens than you do when you get older and, and it can change you. People lose jobs, lose parents, lose kids, lose love. I mean, a lot can happen. You can lose everything you work for and it can change you. You can turn to alcohol, you can become abusive. Those things can happen. Not because that's what you plan for, it's just, that's what life can really do to you if un if you're not careful. Today's guest is a marriage and relationship exit strategist. Her mission is to help women become the author of their lives by divorcing their story of the past so that they're able to fully live in the present by designing a new chapter that they can look forward to living every day. She also has a podcast and a YouTube channel entitled Divorce Your Story. I love that title. That's so good. I've been through a divorce myself. And uh, we're going to talk about that. Brave Hearts yeah. community, let's show some love to Tanya Carter. How are you doing this evening, Tanya? Hi, Sean. How are you? I'm good. I'm real good. I'm good. Yeah, this this topic that we're addressing the uh, oh, this whole thing about the emotional roller coaster after divorce. I mean, I was married 15 years, been through a divorce. I remember the first night when I was in my apartment, my my apartment by myself. And I I was good for the day. Mm -hmm. But when I took a shower that night. I was in the shower and I just started crying. I was just crying like a little baby. I was like, oh, this is real, real. Oh, a hundred percent. It is. <clears throat> it's great. It's like losing a loved one. Actually, it's very equivalent in terms of losing a loved one. That's, you know, that's just what statistics show. So in terms of grief it's very similar. It's just that the, I think the support looks different, mm -hmm. which is, you know, which can be devastating for people who are going through a divorce. Yes, because there's so much I want to ask you. We're going to get into oh, yeah. these questions. Uh, can you share some of your personal experience of navigating the emotional I, aftermath of the divorce? <clears throat> and what was the most challenging part for you emotionally? Are you a content creator, YouTuber? Maybe you've interviewed someone on your video podcast and they said something that was really, really good. Or maybe you said something that was really, really good. Well, Enter Opus Clips. This is the platform that I use when I want to share 30 to 60 second video clips that I can share with the whole world. I mean, you can share those clips on TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram Reels, like these 30 to 60 second clips that Opus Clips can give to you with the click of a mouse. All you have to do is upload the recording and boom. Opus Clips within maybe 10 minutes will give you 15 to 25 different clips with description on the side of the video. And it also gives you like a title and it gives you a rating and let you know how powerful that clip can be used on social media from a rating of 99 all the way down to maybe 60. This is a phenomenal platform that has took my social media marketing to another level. If you want to level up your social media game, go in the description below right now and get the link for Opus Clips. This will not disappoint you. I hope that you're the one and that you are the prototype. Well, I've been divorced for a while, y'all. So wow. I've been out of this thing for a minute. Um, but I would just, I'm I'm definitely going to say initially, um, I felt very pressured to mask everything. Um, I did. I, I didn't know how to handle a divorce, actually. Um, 
in terms of emotions, Mm -hmm. right? You know, with all due respect, I do think it was the best decision. And I still feel this way to this day. I don't regret that. Um, But I will say in the beginning, it was very, I didn't know how to handle it. I didn't know I could feel hurt. Mm -hmm. Now, I definitely felt like a failure. That was probably the hardest emotion for me to work through. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel regret. Um, about leaving, but I did feel like a failure for leaving. Mm. And when I say leaving this, it was more of a mutual decision, but I feel a lot of failure. I, I honestly, um, I am, I pride myself on everything I do. Like anything I feel like I am attached to, it should work. Mm. And when something didn't work, I used to, I made myself feel like I was a failure and I had to work through that. I had to redefine failure. I had to understand um, that that wasn't who I was, but just more of a feeling of what I had. Mm. Um, And that's hard for me because I'm a high performer. Mm. Right. And so I had to work through that and then also feeling like I failed my children. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. And how old were they at the time? When we, when the divorce was final, my daughter was, I think, two. Mm -hmm. So she was very young. So she doesn't remember us even being together, but my son was seven. Um, And he did remember, which is very critical at that age, Mm -hmm. um, just because of brain development, things of that nature. Um, But yeah, he was seven years old when we went through it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are some of the effective coping strategies that help you or your clients manage that emotional turmoil after divorce? Oh, a lot of things. Um, one of the things that I tell my clients to do is to feel. I had to learn how to feel. Feeling is learning how to feel is a strategy because a lot of my clients are high performing, high achieving women, women who get things done type of women. Mm -hmm. Um, So when you tell them to feel, it's like, how do I do that? I don't do anything. You actually, you actually do, but it's about being, it's about being in the now being present, allowing yourself to feel it and call it for what it is like, cause we can't heal anything that we don't, uh, that we can identify. So one of the biggest things that I had them do is to really learn how to feel. Um, Another thing is to journal. Journal is huge. Yes. Um, but I will also say expanding their om- emotional vocabulary, mm-hmm. learning how to name the emotion properly instead of saying I'm angry. Is it really anger? Because anger is a it's a n- normal name that we know. We know anger, but we may not know feeling defeated, mm-hmm. devastated, mm-hmm. Um, powerless, mm-hmm. hopeless, helpless. Yeah. And so when we start naming emotions, we learn that we have different feelings and that's okay. That was, that was very huge. And another thing that I, I tell them to do is, is sleep on it. Don't make the decision right away. I mean, because when you're going through a divorce, a lot of decisions are being made. So you're not just sitting there waiting for the divorce to be over. You're still working. You're taking care of your kids. You're handling your day to day. You're making legal decisions. You still may have to co-parent. So it's a lot of different, it's a lot of different moving parts to this thing. So being able to not be reactive instead of being proactive, but until we stabilize these emotions and work through them, then that's how we can show up differently. So For instance, if someone's dealing with their ex, especially if an ex is high conflict, my advice is to never respond initially. Mm -hmm. Just just wait. Let's Mm just (laughs) I mean, because the emotions in that moment, you'd be like, if you, you know, and so it's it's just a matter of being and, and, and paying attention to yourself and seeing like, is this a good time to do this? Or maybe not now. Just getting more in tune with yourself. And that's that's a strategy. Yes. it's a strategy because you're actually slowing down to speed up, if that makes sense. Yeah. And so getting people to look at it from that perspective can be a challenging in the beginning because it can be some resistance there. But once they lean into it and surrender, mm-hmm. they start to see the fruit of, of, of doing the work. Yeah, I agree, because going through my divorce, I I thought I had my emotions in check until I was going through my divorce. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, this is this is real. And I realized over the years, looking back, I made a lot of 
decisions based off of emotion. Oh, yeah. You know, that ended up costing me when I could have just played it cool. I could have just took a deep breath. But I'm in this whole reactive stage. Like, I got to show them who I am. And, and uh, uh, yeah, so I'm glad you said that because just stepping back and taking a deep breath, that helps you right there. Oh, yeah. Breathing techniques, box breathing, all mm -hmm. of those different things are good strategies. Going outside for a walk, um, you know, just stepping away for a minute. I mean, it, it's a lot of different tools that you can use in your toolbox. Mm -hmm. um, I still do a lot of deep breathing to this day, um, just with anything. Um, because once you learn these strategies, you realize that you can pretty much use them universally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like yeah. That. Yeah. I wish I would have known this in my 20s. Me too. I, I did. I I would have saved myself five years had I done that because I was divorced. Um, I tell people the reason why I called my podcast Divorce Your Story, um, because number one, it's the name of my book. But the, the purpose was understanding to not necessarily stay in the narrative of your divorce mm -hmm. because you can be out of it, but you can still be attached to it from a mental and emotional perspective. You can let the residue or what occurred in your relationship dictate how you function. Mm -hmm. And so what I found myself doing even five years post my divorce was reacting and being reacting in ways and being someone that that's not necessarily me. Yeah. Right. And, you know, just kind of allowing myself to say, okay, this was a part of my chap. This was a part of my book, but not the entire story. Just making sure that I really deal with that particular experience as opposed to sweeping it under the rug and acting like it didn't matter. Mm -hmm. And so really getting people to understand that this was a huge part of your life. Divorce is a life altering event. It can truly change your entire life. Um, there, you know, you can be in situations where you're really set back um, in many ways. Yeah. And so just to act like this didn't happen and just pick up the pieces and move on and ride into the sunset. I'm not sure if that's a good ending to people going through a divorce. I'm not telling, I'm not saying that it may not have been the best decision because I wasn't in their home, mm -hmm. but we still need to unpack some things. When you dissolve something for decades, you can't possibly think that that doesn't have an impact on you. Yeah. Even yeah. if you don't want to be with the other person. Mm -hmm. So I just really, because I see people repeat the same relationship patterns, right? Yep. Um, they don't show, they may not even see that they may not be showing up as their best, even in parenting. They may be a good provider, mm -hmm. but they may not be emotionally present, right? And so these things are very, very important. So this is why divorce your story is so crucial because we can't just divorce the person. We also need to detach. So I always say many dissolve, but few detach. Mm -hmm. That's Think about how many people we know talk about their ex or they past like it happened yesterday. Yeah. Unless you know that they're still connected to the story. They talk about it. You, you could you could feel the energy from it. You could yeah. tell that there's still a lot of things about that past that they haven't dealt with or confronted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it almost feels like it's fresh. Like you said, like, like it happened um, yesterday. You like, like it happened yesterday. Mm hmm. Yeah. 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 What's that the uh what's that one book called The Body Keeps the Score? Yeah, the body keeps the score. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. telling you. And and that's the thing. And so I just I really encourage my clients to really rewrite a new narrative. Like, how do you really want your life to look going forward? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because there's a lot of unhealthy conversations around divorce. And what we must not do is is get caught up in the unhealthy narrative around it. And give ourselves the permission to move forward. You owe that to yourself and your children. Totally yeah. agree. Totally agree. Because I was married 15 years. And I I think I checked out like year 10. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like those last five years, I was just, I was just there. You know, I checked out. But mm -hmm just to think of how long I stayed in there if I just would have been honest enough with myself. Yeah. You know, to 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 be like I don't want to do this anymore, but I was just so scared of what the other side would look like, you know? So I was like yeah, try to work it out. Yeah, it's the unfamiliar. It's 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 the unknown. Um it it's a another chapter that you don't know. Even if you're in something that could be unhealthy and toxic, you'll mm -hmm. stay because it's what you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, totally agree. 
Uh, how can someone rebuild their self-worth and sense of self-worth after a divorce? Wow. How can someone build their self-worth? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. So <laughs> one of the things, no, I think, I think that's a good question. Actually. Um, I actually talked about that, about honoring your worth. I think it's something you need to allow yourself to honor. Um, I think one of the things what's important is for us to unlearn a lot of things. Okay. Like a lot of narratives, a lot of beliefs that we have could really be distorted, can easily be untrue. Mm -hmm. And so we have to take the time to unlearn what we've been taught. I think one of the things is to unlearn that you matter, meaning that your needs, your desires, your feelings are important. Many of us have been told that they're not important. Mm -hmm. And so honoring that self-worth is, is, is understanding that that's important. It's also understanding to not compare yourself to other individuals, mm -hmm. you know, realizing that we are unique. I believe that that's what makes us special. If, if God wanted us to all be the same, I think he would have done that, you know, um, and because what I realized is that God created me, but my mom carried me. I love my mother, but I had to understand who created me. Mm -hmm. um, and what that allowed me to do was really align what his word said on who I am. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Because yeah. that's not it sound good in scripture, but <laughs> living it is is like one thing. Yeah. Right. Um, looking at. You know, what are a lot of your strengths? And I would say in terms of internal attributes as well as external attributes, look at your character. What is it about you that is different? And if you don't know what that is just yet, because you may not know, yeah. ask someone that you trust and just see what they may say. Because a lot of us might say, girl, that's nothing or man, please, yeah. that ain't nothing. But it, it actually may be the thing. That's your it factor. And so I think it's important for us to kind of, you know, dig deep and just really see like, what is it that I'm good at now? Mm -hmm. What is it that I have going on? It's so many people that struggle with that yeah, all the time. But when I really had to realize that God created me and I, and you know, I know some people say, well, I ain't trying to be religious. I'm being very religious right now in terms of my walk with God. When right, I really saw who I was in him, mm -hmm. because you hear that you're perfectly made in his image, yes. but I had to really meditate on a lot of scripture, understand it, really evolve in what the scripture was really saying, because I had to unlearn a lot of what people taught biblically, because even what they taught didn't align with what the word actually said. Mm -hmm. So it's things like that, that I just had to, and also give yourself grace um, to give yourself the freedom to really seek your worth because you may not even think you're worthy of anything because of maybe what you've been through, mm -hmm. maybe your experiences, maybe even some trauma from your childhood that has cultivated this unhealthy narrative that you're unworthy. And so I would definitely say extend grace <clears throat> in the same manner has that God has given you yes, so that you can move on, mm -hmm. you know, honoring the grace that God has given you is also allowing yourself to rewrite a new story. And just seeking that path, you know, um, those are a couple of things that I would definitely say just right off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good because you have to know who you are. I mean, oh my God, because because the world, everybody else will tell you if you don't. And I and I and I realize that just if you if you just step back and you just look on social media and you just see how people just it, it's always it's just. You know, <laughs> it's always something. Um, it's always something like, mm -hmm. and it's like you, and you have to, in in all of that chaos, you still have to know who you are. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because you get, you know, you you become this this one flesh with this person, right? And you look at that as your identity, and then once you're out here and you're starting over again, you're like, who am I? Because you could have, and I know a lot of women struggle with that as far as oh, losing themselves in a marriage. You know, they're just they like, who am I? Um, because they've given so much to their kids and making sure that their husband was good. So I, I've I've heard so many stories of women who just took years off, and, and I I think statistically. I think I was reading an article on psychology today. They were saying one of the reasons that 
women don't remarry faster than men is because like they don't want to carry this quote unquote like this responsibility again. Yeah, I can understand they're carrying that. a whole, you know, they're carrying this family, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah. But I think also that's where you have, and this is why the healing work is so important mm-hmm. because you, you want to know how do I, I mean, one part of healing, it's not just from a romantic perspective, but let's just talk romance, right? Mm-hmm. right. That's an area that you need to say, okay, what is it that I need to unlearn? So I can show up in this relationship fully. Um, I think a lot of us have been taught, give up your life, you know, don't, yeah. It, 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 you know, a lot of this, and and so it's important to get clear on what you need. Mm-hmm. Um, not want. I'm talking about need, mm-hmm. and being able to communicate that, mm-hmm. and not feel like that's not something you should go in and and, and speak about. And that's just my my humble opinion. But yeah. I do believe that that's why maybe quite a few women don't remarry instantly, and not to mention so many other factors. I mean, if they're the custodial parent, I mean, someone else around their children, yeah. um, they might be very cautious of that, which I can't blame them. And then you have, your time is really devoted in the upbringing and raising of your children. And so the capacity maybe for a, to fully be present in a relationship may not be there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also think people need to adjust, giving the kids time to adjust. Um, this, you know, divorce hurts children in so many different ways. And so just getting them adjusted to a new normal, getting them a new rhythm, a routine, seeing how this co-parenting dynamic it will work before we just bring somebody in, you know, it, it's a lot of different variables to it. And so I can, I can see why um, many, many people in fear, you mm-hmm. know, fear of maybe the outcome, like, I, I don't want to go through this again. And I mean, I get it. Those are all understandable, but I think it's more about trusting yourself. Yeah. Um, and knowing that even in tr- what, okay. <laughs> One of the things that I, cause I learned so much in this, I learned so much. One yeah. of the things I really learned was that it's a risk and yeah. you have to decide if this person is worth the risk. Mm-hmm. And that's really how I see it. Mm-hmm. I I can't, you know, and it doesn't mean to, yes, you can be calculated. I recommend you to be, but you can't control the outcome. You can't dictate what someone does. You can only control how you show up. Mm -hmm. But I do recommend for people to ask the questions, you know, ask the tough questions, ask the things that matter to you. Yeah. Not these little fluffy, Mm -hmm. (laughs) these little fluffy. You know, those are cute questions, but we got to get down to business because we're talking about joining lives here. We're talking about that is uncoupling is no joke. Yes. And I'm, I, I say that respectfully, um, mm-hmm. but I, I it, it can it can get real messy if, I, you know, it, it can. So I I think you should finances, kids. Yeah. All kinds of stuff. Um, yeah. But I also recognize is that people can change because mm-hmm. life can change people. Yeah. It's so much to this, Sean. You can be with somebody in, tw- in 15, 20 years later and be like, who is this person? Life can change you, y'all. I, I People, this is why I don't never judge people's situations because mm-hmm. life really can change you. When you're young, I really, you know, you, you see the world in a different kind of lens than you do when you get older and, and it can change you. People lose jobs, lose parents, lose kids, lose love. I mean, a lot can happen. You can lose everything you work for and it can change you. You can turn to alcohol. You can become abusive. Those things can happen. Not because that's what you plan for. It's just, that's what life can really do to you. If, un- if you're not careful Yeah. to be intentional about getting the help, you know? Yeah. I agree because there's so many vices that you can turn to, you know, oh, 100%. That, that process and it don't take much. You it know. doesn't. <laughs> it, it doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't take much at all. It 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 really doesn't. So I, you know, it, it, it's a lot to it. Yeah, for sure. Um, I want to talk about support systems, and, and I kind of want to talk about this a little bit because this is something that's near and dear to me. Uh, mm-hmm. Of course, they are important when you're going through a divorce. But what advice would you give to someone who's struggling to find it? To find support? Yeah, like while going through a divorce. 
Well, I think it's important for us to, this is one of the things that I tell people. Mm-hmm. Your support might, okay. Because sometimes, and I, and I don't mean no harm when I say it, but sometimes our support may not be our family and friends. Mm-hmm. Not because they don't care. They just may not understand the, the situation you're going through. Yeah. So your support might look like people you don't know. Mm-hmm. Right? This is why... I do the work I do because what my clients and I discuss, I have to, number one, not only do I lead objectively, but I have to lead with compassion. I have to lead with truth, but family and friends, a lot of the time may not be the right people, especially if they're very, very biased. And a lot of us are because it's our family, right? But the (laughs) advice that they give may not be the best thriving advice. Yeah. So when you are having difficulty, I would audit who you're looking to support you. Mm-hmm. Are you are you unconsciously or even consciously expecting your friends or your family to give you a level of, of support that they may not even have the capacity to give? Yes. And I think we have to not hold them to that. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And so when we know that they may su- be supportive in different ways, maybe they'll watch the kids for you while you go to therapy That's or true. do something else. So their support might look different. But when you're talking about discussing the intricate details of your marriage, yeah. I wouldn't necessarily go to them. I would go to maybe a therapist Mm-hmm. or even a coach such as myself mm-hmm. because at this point a therapist can help you you know work through your emotions and thoughts and I do that as well yeah. however I also help you see, I, I'm also helping you make better decisions now but then also being strategic about how you want to move forward mm-hmm. and you want somebody who can come in there's really no judgment no bias I'm here to see things objectively yeah. I'm here to be there for you so because I get it And based upon where you are, I got to help you, you know, kind of get through and work through that. So for the person who's having a hard time, I mean, social media is not the place, no disrespect, but you know how it is every, you know, and everybody, you know, even we always seeing about somebody getting a divorce from a celebratory standpoint, (laughs) but it's never a good place to really air out your, your, your your situation. I don't, it's not a place to vent half of the things I see in the comments, I just be like, Oh my God, these, this is the, this is just really not good advice. Mm -hmm. Um, it's like hurt people giving hurt advice. So you have to be, you have to treat this season real personal. Um, you have to be real strategic about who you're confiding in, Mm -hmm. um, because you can find yourself talking about it and venting, but you're not moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I would I would suggest. And, and you know, because it's a lot of it's a lot of resources out here now. Yeah. And even if you can't find a person, there are podcasts, mm-hmm. right? There are books. Mm-hmm. So even if you can't find that person just yet, you can start there. There are support groups. Um, I know divorce care from um, a spiritual perspective. You can go there for support. Yeah. Um, there may be free resources in your area. So there are tools out here. You may just have to do a little searching, but it's out here mm-hmm. or just hire me. I work with you. I know that's right. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's here, you know, yeah. there, there's a lot of resources here um, that you can, you can start even just reading a book, you know, it, it can be something that small. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We do live in a, a information age. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. Because I know for, like for me, when I was going through my divorce, I really didn't have a lot of uh, support. Um, mm-hmm. And it was just kind of, I don't know if it was more because I didn't, I wasn't saying anything like going through the divorce because, you know, it's like no shade to my ex-wife, but it was like she was making all the noise, you know, that whole thing. So I was like, you know what, I'm just going to keep my peace. I'm going to keep it moving. You know, I'm not going to do all this bickering going back and forth, you know, that whole thing. But I've learned a lot going through that process, um, just spending that time by myself and getting to find me again. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you have any questions for our guest, please leave a, a question below. We'd love to hear from you all. Uh, this is <laughs> this is great. This is a topic that's near and dear to me. 
Uh, what are some steps that people can take when it comes to releasing bitterness and resentment and opening themselves up to possibilities of love again after divorce? So how can someone let go of bitterness and resentment? Because like you said earlier, they bring, you know, they just constantly talking about their ex. Like, how do they get rid of that stuff? How do they let it go? I think the only way you can let your let it go is to allow yourself to actually go through it. You know, everybody tell you to get out your feelings. I recommend people to get in them and they are uncomfortable. Um, it's a level of detoxing that you have to do. It's a muscle you have to build. Um, healing is a compounded effect. And we live in a, a age where, you know, I always tell people I love me some Amazon prime. Okay. <laughs> I can get my package. The same day sometimes, right? But when it mm -hmm. comes to your healing, it's not, it's not that, you know, it's not like that kind of switch. But I will say every little step compounds. You know, one of the things that I recommend people do is to check in with themselves. See mm -hmm. how they're feeling throughout the day, right? Um, the re I, I really recommend you to team up with a therapist so you can really kind of have someone else on your team that, you know, to, to hold, you know, to hold you accountable or even someone like myself, but really checking yourself throughout the day. Cause in the, maybe like you said, during the day you was cool, but when you got home at night, yeah. that's when, the, that's when things hit you. Right. Mm -hmm. So just now being more mindful of, of, of what's going on, like, how am I feeling? Mm -hmm. You know, why do I feel this way? You got to challenge this stuff. Like, why do I feel this way? Mm -hmm. And getting to the why can take a couple of things, which is why I recommend people to get coaching. Because if I was a, if I had a client and they told me they felt embarrassed, I would ask why. And they would, t they may give me a surface answer, but then based on that answer, I'm, tr I'm, I'm now trying to now get more deep into what they really said. Cause I can almost assure that that's not really it. Mm. It's challenging them to really allow themselves to be vulnerable, which is not an easy thing for people to do if that is not their norm. Yeah. Right. And so doing that is a game changer and celebrating those wins. I think it's important for people to say, Hey, you know what? I'm not like I was two weeks ago. I still got a ways to go, but I'm not who I was a month ago. Mm. Just you know, allowing yourself to be be proud of that. Um, I believe forgiveness is very powerful. Mm. I, I know, I mean, I don't think you should force yourself to forgive, but I do believe that there's a lot of, there's healing power in forgiveness. Yeah. Even statistically, like um, I was reading an article, this was a while back, the the damages of what, of, of what not forgiving does to you, yeah. your health, your immune system, digestive issues, migraines, joint pain, that can come from holding that grudge internally. Again, the body keeps the score. Mm -hmm. And so really learning how to release, knowing that it's a journey and not just this thing where I, for, I forgive and I'm all as well. No, it is a journey. Yeah. Forgiveness starts with a choice. And we have to work still through the hurt that we may have experienced from the, the dissolution of our marriage. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of seeking love again, you know, I, I think it's all situational, Sean. Mm -hmm. um, I can, if I can be honest, I think people do need time before they get into a new relationship Yeah. Um, of understanding who they are, what they need. I think when you heal, your attraction changes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Like you, the priority and what's what you need in someone shifts. Mm -hmm. You know, what you thought you needed may be more of a preference than a standard. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. And so I think that's that's really important. Um, because I, I just I think the most work, the worst advice someone can give is just put yourself back out there. And I think taking control over your life is also taking control over the dating world. Not you can't control, you know, someone else, but you can control how you show up in the dating world and you want to show up confident. Mm -hmm. You want to show up knowing who you are, knowing what you want, what you don't want. If you, you not about that casual life, Hey, <laughs> yeah. you're just not about that. No, you know, seriously, because it's easy to align yourself with what someone else want just to avoid rejection. Mm. you see what I'm saying? It's like, oh yeah, you know, I ain't looking for nothing either, but you know, you are. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know what this person doing isn't something that aligns with your values. However, you won't say anything because again, you don't want you you avoid rejection by any means. You think, you know, so it's it's being okay with something not working. Yeah. 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 And knowing that it has nothing to do with you in terms of who you are and whose you are. We always internalize everything and we make it so personal. I'm like, you know what? You're not it for everybody and it's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so good. I'm glad you said that because <clears throat> I know me and my in my own life, I struggle big time with taking everything personal. Mm-hmm. Me That's too. like, and I <laughs> and I had to realize I'm like how selfish it is of me to think that everything is about me. I'm like, am I really that important to think everything is about me? Yeah. And <clears throat> I had to learn that shoot, even even still in learning it. Like when I feel myself like starting to take things personal, I'm like that's not pertaining to you. Like being able to separate myself from that. And that took a long time for me to get over. Um, and that was even a struggle in my, in my marriage. <clears throat> when I was previously married, I previously married. I just had this whole wall of defense, you know, yeah. back. I'm like, yeah, I was pretty hard to talk to because I was just getting defensive because I thought everything was by me. And, and, and I, t I totally agree. I used to think that I can control the outcome by how I showed up. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of pressure. So I used to believe that if everything, my love was based on my effort and I had to learn how to let that go. I'm not saying that you don't put forth an effort, of course. but to believe that my love is just totally transactional based on what I do and just not who I am. It's a very unhealthy place to function relationally. Yeah. Yeah. I used to struggle with that big time. I, you know, my worth was based on just basically what I could do. Yeah. Performing. Yeah. Performance. Yeah. It was performing. All and that was all what it was. And, you know, sometimes when we think about it, we were rewarded for performing well. Yeah. Right. And, and sometimes we don't even realize that that's that, mentality that created a narrative that you know what okay well if I do I do well by what I do so this makes people like me and love me and you can you know it, it could just really go real um sour mm -hmm. in a romantic relationship so just learning how to actually fall back a lot more yeah 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 mm -hmm. Uh, how can parents help their kids manage the emotional roller coaster of divorce while also managing their own emotions? Ooh, child. <laughs> oh my God. Listen, no, no, no. That is a good question because I think that one of the biggest concerns for parents when they, when people are going through a divorce are their children, mm -hmm. but what can easily get overlooked are your children. Why? Because there's so much going on, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Legal, logistics, yeah. co-parenting, maybe having to move, sell your home, finances shift. There's a lot of different things that's going on. And so the kids can easily be kind of overlooked in it all. Mm -hmm. um, I think what's really important above all else is for both parents to learn how to create a dynamic um, that is safe for their children. Like one of the things that I always tell people is that, you know, um, and I wrote this down mm -hmm. um, and I said that regardless of how you see the person you're no longer with, it's important to remember that although this person is no longer your partner, they are still the parent of your children. Mm -hmm. And that's important to understand because sometimes we think, okay, I'm no longer with the person. Yeah, but your parental responsibilities are still there. That's right. And so being able to not divorce your own kids Mm. I think it's important for people to understand, you know, learning how to emotionally regulate your own self yeah. because you can't teach your children anything you don't know. See, this is why I work with women, because if I can work with the woman, then she will automatically teach her children. It's just a domino effect. Mm. You teach your children, then you have a stable home. Mm. You know, a lot of people say, well, how can I help my kids help yourself? <laughs> and I don't say that. And I don't say that to be funny. Mm -hmm. I'm saying it because our, if we think about it, our children are watching us. And a lot of us think, oh, my children don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Believe it. Believe that they do. Yes. Um, I think also understand your emotional availability to your children. 
Maybe mm-hmm. you may not, maybe you're not as emotional available in the season you're in, especially if you're in a season where things are dissolving, mm-hmm. know that and get the help for them. Yeah. That is smart. That's what you call good parenting. If you know what I mean? Like there may be a part of you that can be there, but there may be another part of you where you don't have the tools. You don't know what to say because your children are going to ask questions. Yes. Why, 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 why are you all no longer together? You have to be able to navigate those questions. You don't sweep them under the rug. You don't be like, well, that's none of your business. Mm-hmm. No, you want to be able to answer those age appropriately. Yes. And so them getting the help so they can have a safe space. Cause it may be certain things that they may not tell you right now because they don't want to hurt your feelings. They don't, their, their world is changed. So the, they don't want to ruffle any feathers with their parents. So having that safe space for them to be able to talk to maybe a therapist or someone who's skilled in marriage and family therapy, I think will be amazing for them, honestly. But I will also say that if you honestly want to help your kids, help yourself. Mm-hmm. Because when they see mom and dad know how to regulate their emotions, when they see mom and dad being able to come together and still both be present for their children. I'm going to tell you something. Mm -hmm. It's not just, it's not really divorce. It's the conflict that parents have. Yes. And so if that, if we can reduce that conflict as much as possible, you're going to, your kids are going to be okay. Mm -hmm. But if they're in a lot of conflict, if they feel like they have to choose, if they have to be your messengers, right? If they have to sit here and you making them mom and dad of the house, that's not their job. Mm -hmm. It's, in, you know, and you bad mouthing the other parent. That's when it gets ugly. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so we don't want that because that's still their parent and yeah. they still love that other parent yeah. and they love you. Yes. Yep. But you, a- I'm telling you, I, I'm, I'm passionate about that. Cause I, oh, you yeah. know, cause ki- people always say, well, you know, kids are resilient. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, I just don't know how I feel about that because when we say kids are resilient, we can easily say because they're resilient, you know, this doesn't bother them. And it does. Yes. Yes. So yes, they may be able to adapt, but that doesn't dismiss the fact that they're hurting. It doesn't dismiss the fact that they're vulnerable about things. They have questions. Mm-hmm. So I, it, you know, that's, that's definitely what I would say. Yeah. No, that's good because, you know, when kids, like you say, it's it's what they see. And then the first thing when people go through a divorce, first thing they do is they use the kids. Yeah, I've seen that too. I, I've, I've seen, that's why I said like, don't divorce your kids. I've seen it where you either have the non-custodial parent that's being alienated from their children, yeah. or you could have where that parent just says, I'm not coming around anymore. Mm -hmm. You could have the custodial parent using that child, you know, as a crutch to the other parent. And that's, you know, that's, that's immature. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's you hurting. Mm -hmm. And this is why you have to get the help. Yes. Because your kids, (laughs) your kids are going to grow up. Mm -hmm. They're going to be adults one day. Yep. And When someone asks, well, how was it growing up with both your parents in separate homes? You, as a parent, you get to decide the kind of story they want that that you want your children to tell. And that's going to be based on how you show up. Yep. Yep. I totally understand because that's the first thing people say, even as adults, like you say, how was your childhood or whatever? And they, they can just automatically go to that spot where, my dad, I remember when they divorced. I mean, and you're a full grown adult. Yeah. You can almost call everything in detail. You're like, because my dad, when he left during this, it's like, so um, and you only get that that one time, right? You only right. Get you don't moment. you don't get a do your children don't get a do over. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's important for people to understand. Like your 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 child doesn't get a do over to be a child again. We can probably have we can do have a do-over in life as adults in terms of maybe getting remarried Mm -hmm. redesigning our life but our children would never get another chance at being a child again Mm -hmm. and so know that you have the ability to say you know what what would I want my kids to say about me 
even if you can't control, even if the other parent doesn't want to be maybe cooperative, because some people, they just aren't cooperative. They don't want to be civil. Mm -hmm. And that's when you want to be more parallel in your parenting. But if, but for the, the, the person who's listening, how do you want to show up? What kind of parenting experience do you want your children to have with you? Mm -hmm. Can they say, you know what? I used to, my mom, she, she was just an ear. She, you know, if I had some things to say about the other parent, my mom or dad never said anything bad, but they, they did listen. Yeah. Um, I saw my mom or dad um, being able to handle conflict very respectfully. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or I saw both my parents show up and support me. It can be mm -hmm. that too. So know that you can control the narrative in terms of how you want your kids parenting experience to be mm -hmm. yeah i agree I, I know you were saying that your divorce was um was a while ago but i mm -hmm. want to know what were some things that you learned about yourself after going through a divorce do we got time today <laughs> listen i'm gonna tell you one thing i learned about myself mm -hmm. um i used to try to control everything Mm. And I didn't think that's what I was doing. Mm -hmm. if, if I can be honest, because I thought, yeah. oh, you know, I was just trying to be supportive because <laughs> I know they can do better, you know, just whatever. <laughs> right. Just being a mess. But <laughs> I'm telling you, learn, I thought I could control the narrative. Mm -hmm. um, I realized that my approach needed work. Mm -hmm. You know, I was a doer. One thing about me, I was a doer. Mm -hmm. I never, I always did things. I knew how to handle my affairs. Mm -hmm. However, this tongue of mine, <laughs> it's just what it is. Like it got real slick. And, and, and here's the thing, you know, I used to justify that. Mm -hmm. Well, if, if he X, Y, and Z, then I wouldn't have to X, Y, and Z. And it's like, okay, Tanya, but in the healing work, it's like, but you're still allowing somebody to dictate how you function. Mm -hmm. And so knowing that no matter what somebody else do or don't do, I still control the temperature. And I didn't know how to do that regardless. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to properly communicate mm -hmm. what I needed to say without tearing it down, tearing a person down. Uh, you understand? Yeah. I mean, you know, for real. And, and it, and I don't brag about it. I actually mm -hmm. hated that. I was even like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was like, you really don't have to be like that. And I, and I recognized that I had some work to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I had to own that part of myself because had I not, I'll still justify me being that way. But I would say those were the two things that I really had to learn that those were two major, major things about myself. Yeah that I, that I, that I had to learn, I learning how to control the controllables. That was a game changer for me. That's good. I, thanks for the, the transparency. I appreciate that because a lot of people it's, it's easy to, to, you know, still shift the blame, you know, kind of thing. So I appreciate that. Uh, yeah. We do have a, a question from uh, I am Jen Grace. She asked, uh, how do you explain to your children the disrespect from the other parent without throwing the other parent under the bus? the disrespect to who her or the children because uh, it says disrespect from the other parent so I, I i think like maybe not throwing the other parent under the bus like talking to the kids like you know sometimes you know people oh you're instead of being instead of saying like oh she says yes to me how do you explain to your children a disrespect from the other parent without throwing the other parent under the bus she says yes to me OK, one of the things that I'm I'm curious on is, is it being done in front of the children? Mm. And 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 this is this is just me asking the question, because um, I don't think you have again, we don't have to get into intricate details. Yes. I think what's important is us teaching our children how to manage relationships. Right. Knowing where to place people where they belong, even if it's their parent. So. 
In other words, I don't think we have to go into this thing of, well, your father's disrespectful gotcha. um, and he's this and he's that. Right. I think it's important to know that, hey, you know. When there's certain when you're when your father speaks a certain way, then this is that I feel isn't conducive to respecting me. Mm -hmm. then mommy has to set appropriate boundaries. Yes. Always go back to the solution on what you have to do. Mm -hmm. um, so we can make sure that those that, you know, cause it can be kind of blurred, right? Because if right. I don't know if they're seeing their mom being disrespected mm -hmm. or the, I mean, or the fact that you just, I mean, because my thing is, I guess if if they're asking the question, maybe they they've seen it, they've witnessed it. Maybe she she says uh, they are disrespectful to me, making sure they they know that that's not OK, but telling them to continue respecting their father. She says, yes, it is done in front of them. OK, so it's one of those things where when it's done in front of them, this is where when we do have a talk with our children we definitely have to say that what they experience is not something a person should do when they respect you mm. and know. And, and I mean, because these are things that they do need to know, especially if dad is doing it in front of them. The yeah. only thing that I will watch me doing is bad mouthing him, but let's address the act, yeah. right? The act is the disrespect, right? The act is the name calling or maybe the yelling. I don't know exactly what he's doing, but yeah. the act is what we really want to focus on. Mm -hmm. And let them know that when they are being treated that way, then this is where they have to set boundaries. Um, I would ask my children, do they feel safe when they are in the presence of their dad? Um, again, I don't I don't know. But we know that, of course, his reaction is is about his own hurt. Mm -hmm. But that's how I would approach it. Yeah. Um, and I would also even tell him. You know, hey. Let's not do this in front of our children, mm -hmm. you know, um, and then if this continues and I don't know if you're around family and friends mm -hmm. where, because if you all are, I guess, co-parenting, maybe you need a person in the middle to pick the kids up and drop them off. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I'm saying that is because if your kids keep seeing that, then it becomes a problem. Um, another thing is to see what, a lawyer can draw up in terms of a parenting plan. There may be another way to communicate from a technology perspective, like um, family wizard, things like that, where mm -hmm. it's court ordered. I mean, sometimes you may have to go that, you know, that extreme with people, especially yeah. if they're not going to be cooperative. Mm -hmm. But if you have another person who can say, Hey, I'll pick up the kids or I'll be the middle person for the kids. So that way they don't have to hear their mom being disrespected. Yes. Then you can do that. If you feel like they may not be considered safe in terms of not necessarily physical, but mm -hmm. verbal, it can be yeah. just as impactful. Then yeah. you, you may want to see what your options are in terms of visitation and what that may look like in terms mm -hmm. of, I mean, we have to think about what's best for the children in the long, long haul. Yes. What they're seeing and what they're witnessing will impact how they're function, regardless if that is their father or their mother. If they are displaying behaviors that can truly be impactful to their child, mm -hmm. then, I, and I would say for me, I would definitely look into seeing what other things we can say and what other parameters we can have in place. Yeah. That's so good. She, mm -hmm. she said, thank you. Thank you. That is clarifying. Okay. Thank you. And I, I hope that that works out because it's, it's so overwhelming because mm -hmm. in the moment you want to go off. Let's <laughs> yeah. just oh, keep yeah. it. No, seriously. Let's <laughs> just real. keep it 100 yeah. in that moment. You like, who you talking to? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, that, listen, I'm just going to listen. If she watching, I'm just here to tell you, I get it. Cause I'm one, hold on. What? You know, I get it. So this stuff that I'm saying, it, it sounds, it's actually a great, it's, it's, it's what you should do. But in those moments, honey, when the emotions take over. <laughs> yeah. Sean, you'd be yeah. like, look, we gotta regulate, right? Come, <laughs> <laughs> come, 
We got to regulate. I'm telling you, you be like, hold on, what you, what? Okay. Yeah, because as soon as you, you know, as soon as you swing, you know, your kid going to remember that. They're going to be like, yeah, I remember my mama, see, she swung. <laughs> but anyway. um, Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that is so real because there was a time when uh, I remember my daughter was asking me when we were actually going through the separation when I was, you know, in my own place and my ex-wife was in her own place. And I would get my daughter on the weekends and she would just ask me, like, why, dad? Like, and at the time, even though she was 14, I was just like, I, 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 don't, I can't tell you everything right now. But as she got older and matured, and then we we could we started to have those those real conversations. Um, yeah. And still being able to navigate that. I think one of the biggest things that um, I learned and this is what a friend had. Um, I mean, he he gave me some great advice because he works with men, he works with fathers. Mm -hmm. And he said, be who your child needs to be in the moment. Mm -hmm. And that always, st that stuck with me because sometimes I found in my situation, specifically with my daughter, because again, she was two, she's 17 yeah. now. Yeah. So she didn't know much, but as the years went by, she just started to develop her own perspective, which is why I tell people to be mindful of what they say. Let your children form their own perspective. Mm -hmm. I know that's easier said than done. Yeah. But it, when you allow them to develop their own perspective, you're also allowing them to have their own emotional autonomy. Yeah. And that allows them to not feel like, you know, they don't have to, um, really take on your views because your views are going to be different. Why? Because you had a romantic partnership with them yep. where your child has a parent child relationship with them. Those mm -hmm. are fundamentally different. Yep. So um, the conversations got more deep. Um, I would say for me, I was very cautious. A lot of things I, I, I just listened more than anything. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I did give her some advice, but what I did do is, hire I hired a therapist mm, because yeah. you know my I'm mama bear you know <laughs> you know, you know there's, you, there's 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 going to be some bias there yeah right and yeah. and and I I wanted someone to be able to see things objectively mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know um and that was important for me but had I not did the work on myself Sean mm -hmm. I wouldn't have known to do that yeah and that's why it's really important to do the work on yourself because you realize like, wow, this is what doing the work did for me. Mm -hmm. How would my kids learning how to do some of this work for themselves, how would it benefit them? Yeah. So good. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Because they, they say, uh, what's that one quote? Time doesn't heal all wounds is what you do with that time that heals all wounds. It doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> it just carries on and it becomes sometimes or a lot of the time, even generational. Yeah. And, and so we have to allow ourselves. It, it's so much on this timeline of life. Mm -hmm. So much happen. Life is life be life in, right? Life do what it does. And I'm telling <laughs> you, I, that's why I mean, I, I, my compassion for people has gotten so deep mm -hmm. um, because life is real and it's so much going on. And yeah. to just not think, and to just keep going and not stopping to do some hard work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like every day I ask God to cleanse my heart, purify my heart. Amen. Soften my heart. Because sometimes it, all it takes, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I one, mean, to, one situation. I'm telling you. And, you know, it's only but so much your heart can handle without the work. And I just think we got to know that there are seasons where, I think you always should be doing the hard work, but then you also maybe have seasons that are just so crucial where you got like, nah, I, I got to deal with this. And I think divorce is one of those things, mm -hmm. one of those seasons. Mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. wow, this has been a, a phenomenal episode. So much wisdom. Uh, yeah. Oh my God. Uh, Tanya, let everyone know how they can get in touch with you. Tell us about uh, the YouTube channel, all that good stuff. Let everyone know. Yeah. So I'm on Instagram. I am Tanya Carter. Um, I'm on YouTube as Tanya Carter. My podcast is called Divorce Your Story. And I also have a book called Divorce Your Story. And I'm also, um, for the month of October and November, I am doing like 90 minute intensives where I'm able to work with a person on two major areas in their life. I do have a group coaching program, but I'm not 
going to be doing any more group coaching for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually going to be doing um, intensives where we, we, we work together Mm one-on-one and we work out two areas of your life that you need some, some, some work in and drawing you out a plan. Mm -hmm. So that way you can, you know, start implementing it, you know, having some action so we can set some goals and move forward. And so, so yeah, that's, you know, that's, that's, that's where I'm at. So yeah. And I'll be dropping a podcast episode tomorrow on seven key parenting mistakes to avoid. Wow. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Brave Hearts community, you heard it here. Make sure you go and connect with Tanya because as you can see, she dropped so much value in this episode. I only can imagine what the rest of your content is like. I love the reels. I've been reeled out on your reels um so much good stuff in 60 seconds um thank you so much for your time if you are watching this uh via youtube or or actually when you listen to this via podcast make sure you leave a rating and review on apple Podcasts. would love to hear from you by doing so we'll put you in the drawings for a free amazon gift card this is sean heineman make sure you share this video with someone because you never know what someone is dealing with Make sure you share this video. This is Sean Heineman with special guest Tanya Carter.